All right, so I'm not going to be able to see anybody. Is that right? No, sir. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm sharing my whole screen because I got to go back and forth between some things. Where's my thing? Oh, here's your. Anyone in the audience, you can submit a question through the chat or the Q&A. Otherwise, um, it'll be, just be a straightforward presentation. Yeah, right, and I went and redid all my slides for y'all. So um, there we go. So uh, weird not to see anybody in my audience. I'm just talking to myself here in my, uh, my room here, but uh, I will interact with you through uh, some poll everywhere uh, questions uh, as you've probably seen in some of your, your classes. So. So uh, I'm honored to be here giving this presentation uh, in the illustrious company of those like uh, Dr. Reinhard King and Dr. Elliot. And, um, and I noticed you already did something about abstracts and you're gonna do something about presentations. So that simplifies my presentation somewhat. Uh, they're all part of the same continuum. The, uh, I'm gonna talk about how to prepare the poster. So I call it like the anatomy of a poster but really posters are a presentation and they are not meant to uh, be a standalone document. Uh, so, so you do want people to be able to get something out of it when you're not there, but you do want to prepare a presentation. But I'm gonna not talk about that part of it today uh, because of time and, um, and you're already gonna be talking about how to give a presentation. Maybe that's more like a slide presentation, but think of poster presentation being the same, but maybe uh, usually a shorter version of, of the talk, and you have a poster behind you to present instead of slides. Okay, so what we'll talk about today is uh, assessing the audience, because it does matter who you're speaking to, how you set up a poster, uh, assembling the content, organizing your information, and my key point here is going to be to simplify creating visuals that work and are clear to your audience, assembling the poster, a little bit of nitty gritty there. Uh, I'll provide a couple other resources and these slides should be available to you at some point also. Uh, and then a couple take home messages. Okay, so, so again, I said, this is a presentation, not just a poster. So you have to figure out who you're talking to. So are you trying to inform people with, about your information? Are you trying to persuade them into your point of view uh, you have some data and that changes the paradigm of, of what people are thinking. Are you trying to just do it to promote yourself? Is that, is that one of your main uh, reasons? Are you doing it to compete? So those are a little different. So when you're competing in a poster presentation con contest, uh, like a student po poster presentation and um, judges will come, you're going to give a little bit different presentation to judges, a very formal presentation. Whereas if you're gonna do it to whoever's walking by, you just may wanna ask them some questions and then tailor your presentation for them. Again, don't have enough time to talk all about that, about the presentation skills side of it, um, but also when you're forming your poster, you're gonna to wanna to think about those. And I already mentioned it's a presentation. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to poll everywhere and, and ask what are the key pieces uh, that you need to have a poster. I assume this morning you talked about what are the key pieces that have to go in an abstract, and here I'd like to know what you think. So if you go to uh, polleverywhere.com slash kbillier, and I'll make sure this is a it's activated, and I'd like to see some uh, responses before I move on. And you can upvote these. I just typed one in to get some of you started. See if I, uh, and you can upvote and downvote these um, if you like also, if you didn't want to type one in. Chris, can you put the link in the chat, please? Oh, good idea. And I have to go. Okay, it 
it's also up at the top there. And the next one, you'll be able to text them into. I couldn't figure out how to do it for this one. So, okay, we got we got a uh, we've got a lot of good results now. Pictures, results, titles, acknowledgments, conclusions, graphics, results. Okay, introduction. Okay, I'm going to uh, lock that one. I think you're getting most of what I was going to say, so that's great. Um, so title, I put that one in. Uh, you definitely need a title. It should be professional and descriptive. And it could be the, the catch that gets people to go there. I have, there's a picture of a, of a poster here on the slide. You can make it bigger if you want to and make it, make it the main catch to get people to come to your poster. Um, of course, you remember to put your co-authors and institutional affiliations. I like to put them with a, a logo on there. Um, an abstract, unless the conference says you have to use a certain format, an abstract is nice sometimes to tell people uh, what your, your poster is about, but it's not required. Your whole poster is basically your abstract uh, of your talk, and then you're, and, and it has a couple of figures. So, so if you like to put a small abstract in the upper left, go ahead, but uh, it's, it's not always required. And introductions there because you got to get to the significance. You got to tell them why they should care. You got to give them a little bit. What what's the context? And then what is your goal? Uh, again, these are the kind of things that you needed in your abstract. You got your materials and your methods, your results, uh, and then discussion and conclusion. That's one of the things that people forget to do is to put a conclusion. You know, don't just put data and let them figure it out. Put the conclusion, uh, and then. If it's funded work, you have to acknowledge it. Or if there's people who aren't on, on the author list that helped you with it, you should do that. And then uh, putting the references. And you can use an abridged style. Uh, you can't really see this down here uh, on the poster, but it can, it can, you don't have to put a full long reference because again, you're going to be there. And as long as you're referencing the first author's name and maybe the journal and, and volume, um, that's usually fine. Save space on the on the poster. Okay, so here's uh here's from a, um, a site I found online, some some the way different posters look, okay? And and uh, a lot of it is your preference, but I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna go to Poll Everywhere, I'm gonna ask you which one you like, and then I'm gonna come back so you can actually see them. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna come back to my slides so you can see them. So pick which one you like, and then also think about why you like that one better. See what the progress is here. We got some A's and B's and C's. I'm gonna let it go a couple more seconds. And again, think about it because I'm gonna ask you, uh, what do you like about them? Okay, we got about equal equal for A and B, and people don't like uh, C as much. Okay. How about this one? Now I don't know if you've been to conferences lately and seen these kind of posters. About uh, three years ago, these started coming up where. Uh, there's research that says, put the main point very large, and then you can use these QR codes. Everyone's got a smartphone now, and you can go uh, see what their results are more detailed. You can see what their methods are. You don't have to write it on there. Now, I'm an engineer. I like a structure. Uh, I'm not a marketing person, uh, and I like people to come because they see the title, uh, they see the topic, and they come to my office, and I like to have enough on my poster that people can... I can walk through, through like a slide presentation. I've got my methods I can talk about and show them a schematic. I've got some figures of data, and then I have my conclusion written on there that I may say it also, but other people could see it if I'm not by my poster. But these are getting popular, so it's up to you whether you want to use those or not. Most of what I'm going to talk about today is the more standard poster that has, has your intro methods, re, uh, results, and discussion. Okay, so um, regardless of what kind, especially if you use that kind, space is very limited. Uh, this is only, you're, you don't, you can't put in 12 slides. This is just one page that you're able to show the audience. So um, what's the most important thing? 
make sure there's a clear takeaway message. And in that poster style I just showed you, it was huge, uh, but it could just be in a box at the bottom. It could be the title itself. Then make sure there's key supporting information that backs up that core takeaway. My, my, my rule, there should be no sentences, period. Everything should be bullets, absolutely no paragraphs. Uh, but I don't even like subject verb, just bullets, because you're going to be there. They don't have to read it in, in long, except for the abstract if you put in, maybe that would be uh, in paragraphs, but uh, no paragraphs, definitely uh, anywhere else. And generally, no, not even a sentence. You don't, you're just wasting, uh, wasting words. When you do have bulleted items, you don't want a huge list of 20 things. Uh, research, like on websites and such, says that you should have no more than seven entries under anything. So group things otherwise. You also want to have a visual flow. The, the audience, if you're not there or as you're walking them through, they should be able to follow. Usually it's left to right. In, in English, we read left to right and usually top to bottom and then you go left to right. So that's generally uh, how it is. Now, again, you don't have to follow this three column format I have, but if you're just starting out, it's very nice to have a set way of putting it together. And then if you get more creative as you get better at it, I've seen much better posters than I make, but these are easy for me to make and I know they're effective. They just might not be the most uh, visually pleasing. Okay, so which one of these do you like better and um, think why? We'll go to the next question. And to do this, I think I have a picture of it right there so you can see it while I'm seeing what you are entering. It's settling out, so I will. Uh, I'll take that as um, more people don't like either one of these, but some people like the top and some bottom, kind of equally. So they are two valid ways of doing a uh, project uh, poster, and I'm going to ask you uh, which what you like about them. So next, okay. So what do you like about these posters? And if you didn't like either, the next question is what don't you like, okay? But hey, try and say something positive about either one. All right, those are great. Uh, so it uh, looks like there's a good amount of white space. They're not cluttered. Uh, some like the background color. Uh, big title, you can really see what they're talking about. Um, and then some. there's some negative comments already. So let's go to the negative comments uh, next. You know, what don't, what don't you like about them? Uh, some, some people already put a couple of those in. Maybe I can make it a little bigger. Yeah, nope. <laughs> All right, a lot, of, a lot of talk about backgrounds. Um, 
which which I think are good good points. Uh, that's that's most of them. <laughs> uh, and then may, maybe too many words. Okay, let me go back to uh, my slides here. Okay, so so I so I'll agree with you on the background issue. The background uh, was not ideal on either of those. I think so. So some of you, there might be a template you're supposed to use for your, your university. It may or may not be great. Who knows who's making those? Um, but if marketing made it, hopefully it's pretty good. Um, do remember, and this is less important now than it was years ago, but if you are printing a big poster and it has a, a really dark background, it's gonna cost more to print. You're gonna use up a lot of ink. But uh, if, if, if that's the style you want, it's not too bad. But it is hard to read uh, dark on dark, right? So with black text on the darker parts, it's going to be hard. You don't have the same contrast. Uh, putting a picture in the background is not uh, is not bad. Some people do it very well, but that's more like an expert move, and you have to pay a lot more attention to a lot of things. So, for example, this this grass in the background. Let's uh, let's hope that whoever made this poster, uh, the poster was something having to do with grass. Because if it's just a superfluous picture, then it's totally not there. But if it has to happens to be a micrograph of uh, your biomaterial and then you're doing something over it, maybe that'll look cool. But you got to watch out for things like this. Uh, these numbers, some of the numbers are a nice blue sky, but some of them are coming down here uh, in the grass. And it's going to obscure, especially if there was green in your picture or blue, the blue parts would be obscured to the green. So you got to be careful of that. Red on green, not so good. It's, it's just very hard to see red text in general. Uh, especially on a dark, it put red text on a black background, really hard to see. Um, colors are really nice. It draws you to the poster. Um, but I, as I mentioned, uh, don't put red on black and yellow on white. I mean, if you're my student, you're going to drive me crazy if you make a graph on a white background with a yellow uh, curve. You can't see it. Um, and also, this actually happened to me in a review I was in um, this week for Grant. They put up uh, slides and they had what... Uh, what university they were from in different colors. So you could tell that on each slide, it was very consistent, except for there was a colorblind uh, panelist. So she couldn't tell uh, which school they were from because they all looked the same to her. So try to be cognizant of that. Um, I particularly like a dark text on a light background. Um, again, cheaper to print uh, just a white. It's a, there's nice contrast in there. Uh, so, but again, that's my, my preference, but it, can be good to have a dark background with lighter um, text. Okay, so then let's get into some do's and don'ts about what do you put on there. Uh, a lot of you mentioned the graphics, where, where some liked it in the last slide, but a lot of you mentioned that's one of the most important things when you're setting up a poster. And yeah, here's your data. If you're doing a three column, that middle column to me should all be about results and data because that's what you really want to uh, show off. Look at this this chart here. You know you you want to avoid uh, charts. You want to make that into a graph if you can. It's much easier to to uh, to for the viewer to understand. So avoid those. Um, be consistent with colors. So if you have a bunch of graphs and your control is always blue and and uh, treatment A is red and treatment B is green, in the next graph if you can use the same, it's uh, you know in one case you're talking about strength. In the next case, you're talking about de degradation. In uh, the next case, you're talking about uh, how the cells reacted with it. But if you can use the same colors for each of those graphs, it's really easy to figure out for the, the user. They don't have to read all your, uh, your legends as much. Watch out for sig figs. This one's pretty good, uh, but I'll give you an example of that one in a minute. And then when you're making graphs, I could do a whole presentation about effective uh, data presentation, but I'll just give you a couple examples here. So here's an example of a graph, which I, is right out of Excel. You can see that I don't like this graph. I don't like these horizontal lines, but more importantly, what are they trying to say? Are they trying to say X and Y are different? Okay, you can see X and Y are bouncing around. They're different. And there you have, in this case, it was a, in square feet. But then look at the green line. If the difference is what you're really trying to say, how about a graph that just shows the difference? So you can show that raw data in the red and blue there, but then you want a separate plot to say, look, I have a hundred percent difference in some places. I've got a 50% difference in other places that, and then that's, if that's the important point, you got to come through with that. Now there's too many sig figs over here to the left. I didn't make these uh, graphs by the way. And then here's an old one, uh, but a goodie here. Uh, what's wrong with this one?
looks like uh, people backed Huckabee, if anyone remembers from 2012, uh, backed Huckabee, right? But look at this pie chart. It doesn't equal 100%. Pie charts are great to show you proportions of a whole, but you can't have it in, uh, uh, you can't have it not equal 100%. So I gave you a little time to read that. Uh, what a statistician sees, a normal person reading and saying, wow, there's a lot, a lot of people. But a statistician says, huh, they can't know down to that person. And so please do use proper significant digits. And there are uh, ways of figuring out exactly how many you're supposed to have. But a general rule is, you know, simplify it. If you're trying to say this one's a lot bigger than that, and one is 150 point something, 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 and the other is 50 point something, something, something. Just put 150 and 50. The, the extra sig figs are gonna obscure what you're trying to say. They're not adding to it. They're, people don't think you're more accurate because you can put more digits there. Okay, so some, some specifics of uh, designing visuals. I This is like getting into the nitty gritty here. I generally paste pictures from whatever I'm making it in into uh, into the poster. I don't uh, cut and then paste. I actually make it into a picture file, like a, a JPEG, and I post it in there. So then I can resize it in there. And if I change, if I uh, double click on it, it doesn't it doesn't go and change anything in there because it's not linking to Excel. Okay, that's my uh, uh, per personal preference. Um, you can select no background when you're in most programs. And then when you put it on there, and if there's something overlapping uh, in text, you'll be able to see it through there and you won't have to worry about which is in front of which. Uh, so that's, that's my, again, preference. And if you're doing it on a different color background, you'll see the background through it. When you're putting the photos in there, make sure they're high enough resolution. Here's one that's 96 DPI, especially when they're gonna be blown up. So they might look good on your screen, but then when it's blown up to a four foot poster, it's not gonna look good. And so, you know, at least 150 DPI in, you wanted 150 DPI in the size you're gonna put it on, right? So if it's gonna be three in, on your screen, it's only one inch across on the poster, it's gonna be three and a half inches across. There you still want 150 DPI. And maybe you wanna start with something higher like 300 uh, so that it is even clearer. Line art is very good to use as opposed to uh, bitmaps or something because a, not, a line art actually scales with the size. So it's very clear. When you do put images on, try not to add images that don't actually fit or add to it. So putting in, uh, this is just some data from some, some uh, poster and it has a picture of uh, clip art, right? It has nothing to do with uh, the phyloestrogens, okay? Phytoestrogens. So you wanna have something that, that matches what you're talking about. And, and pictures are great. They can show people what your apparatus looks like. They can show what your samples look like, but this doesn't tell the audience very much, especially if you're not there, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna annotate your, and you wanna show them what they should be looking at. Even if you're standing there with them and you're saying, oh, here, here's a photo showing the apparatus, it keys them into exactly what you want them to see on it. And here's another example of, instead of just putting the raw data of, a, uh, of, of some kind of uh, picture of the sample, you actually annotate it to show what, what they're supposed to get out of it. So just a, a joke from uh, PhD Comics there uh, to say, make sure your axes are labeled and also big enough that they can see what that label is, okay? So use proper axes. Use you generally what you want to do is make sure someone can see it from three feet, which is sort of like if it's on your laptop, if you just stand back maybe half a foot or foot from it. And only use comedy where it's relevant and probably not in a poster. Okay, again, nitty gritty. So when you're making your poster and you and you have a maybe you're using PowerPoint. I use PowerPoint for most of my posters. You're making that poster before you even start, set it up so that it's the right size. So if you're going to a conference and they say you got a four by eight place to put your poster, you can set it in right here, uh, type in the actual inches, and then you'll know when you're printing it, you don't have to resize at the printer. Say, well, print it that size. They know exactly what size to print it, and you'll know what actually fits on there, what font sizes look good. Now, if 
the conference you're going to says you got four by eight, you don't have to make your poster four by eight. Eight is a huge poster. You don't, you generally want to make something like four feet wide at most, and then, and then it fits on your um, board. Generally, they're going to be landscape. Some places say, I mean, like in Europe, I think they use a, a bit more portrait. So sometimes you will, you will be putting a portrait. But if, in, in my case, uh, my preference would always be to have landscape. We talked about white space uh, a little bit ago. In this particular picture right here, there's not enough. You, you need space in between your figures um, and it should be consistent. There shouldn't be like a lot of space between one column and another and then a little space between another one. Again, getting into the nitty gritty, when you go to print your poster to go to the conference, uh, people do it sometimes, but generally you're gonna to wanna to have a professional poster printed, not printing out little slides and putting them up on the um, board. I'll admit that is an inexpensive way of doing it. And, uh, and if that's what you have to do, that's fine. Generally, you're gonna to wanna to send a uh, PowerPoint slide, but that might be big. So you might have to convert to a PDF. Just make sure the conversion looks just as good when you blow it up and send it to your camping, campus uh, printing service. Usually like they're like $20, $30, $40. Um, if you do, you're under a bind and you can't get there, you go to Kinko's, they can get very expensive and they do get more expensive with more ink. So if you have a dark poster, so you could be doing 50, 60. Now I don't wanna um, say anything about BMES, uh, except for that I think they offer uh, a, a way that, that they partner with someone that will print it for you and, and have it for you at the conference. And they often will have it on uh, fabric, not even on paper. But uh, that'll cost you like, or maybe your advisor, uh, upwards of $200. So talk to your advisor first if you're gonna do that. It's really nice to have a fabric poster. You can roll them right up and, and put them in your suitcase, uh, but it's a bit exorbitant because they usually just fade once you get them into your lab uh, in the first few months anyway. And generally, you might be, I told you earlier, so I don't want to contradict myself, you know, have high resolution figures, but sometimes people take pictures with these new phones, have, uh, you know, 16 megapixel cameras on or something, and, or, or you might have a nice uh, camera in your lab. If you put these huge files, then your file size gets so big, you can't even send it through the email. So generally, you're going to want to compress it down to something reasonable. Okay, this is uh, coming towards the end. I'm only using a half, a half an hour here, so maybe there's time for some questions. Uh, I'm gonna ask, here's an example, uh, basically taken from one of my classes a, a while back, um, and uh, I wanna get your feedback on it. So here's, so what don't you like about this poster here? And I'll show it to you. I'm going to jump and see if there's comments so far. Okay. Good, uh, good comments coming in. Okay, so I'll read some of these. So there's this big table right in the middle, and sorry, it's hard for me to show it at the same time. Uh, maybe I should have. Uh, see if I can. Oh, I can't, I can't show it at the same time. Um, so uh, table's very overwhelming in the middle there. Uh, it's not even a line quite right. There's a lot of writing on it. Uh, there's very small font that you can't read from uh, five feet back. Too wordy. Okay, so those are great comments right there. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll highlight a couple of those here. Um, so, so I, I'll tell you a couple things I like. I like that schematic. Uh, I like the photo and I like the fact that they wrote on it 
where the force is coming and what the reactions are and what the distances are. So there's a nice use of a photo that is also showing them a schematic of how they're, uh, how they're defining their variables and their equations. You all mentioned it, too much raw data in that table. I do like the fact that they use red to show what the mean are everything and uh, standard deviations in blue. So those come up, but I don't need to know every sample. Like, so that would have been a nice graph, uh, just a few things. You know, there's one, two, three, these four things will be on the X axis and, and it could be a couple graphs to show um, what their main, what's their main point? Does, is the length and diameter their main point? Probably not. Uh, probably it has to do with what the stiffness or the UTS is, okay? Uh, the um, figure text is hard to read on some of these. Uh, it's hard to read what, what these things are. Uh, I, again, I like pictures. People mentioned that that's a key part to have in every poster. Uh, I like pictures, but does, is every sample or should they be representative? Like this right here, this uh, force displacement curve, again, which I, I can't quite read from there, but it shows one representative plot, not, uh, not every single sample. So, so that's just a bit too much. Um, a couple more things here. Uh, too many sig figs in here, 2.197. Um, they do, uh, this is an example where they do have the abstract. The, they do have nice bullets here, but... Um, too, a bit too long, too many words in there. Uh, it's a bit hard to follow. Okay, so uh, whenever you make a poster, there's always things you could do better. So we don't want to be too hard on any poster, but if you just follow these basic rules, you're on a good start. And so the first thing you want to do is assemble all your information. Once you have all your information there, you're able to, to arrange it in, in an effective way. You definitely want to have an effective title because that is usually the what people are when they're walking by quickly. You want it to be legible, and they're going to say, "Oh, they're going to be drawn and say, I'm interested in that topic or I'm not." You want to have a clear objective, and that should be somewhere probably in the introduction. They hear it's in in dark font here, and you need to have some kind of conclusion so people know what to take out of it. The flow should be logical, usually going from top to bottom, and then the next column, next column. Uh, the text should be legible. Uh, generally, you only want to use three sizes of text. So you can have your, your title size text, your, your uh, bullet size text, and maybe your figure captions or legends could be a little bit smaller. You don't want to use 10 different text styles. You want to stay in one. Didn't even mention this. Generally, for any presentation, uh, poster or for uh, uh, slides, you want to use a sans serif font. You want to use something like these right here, like Arial, um, the new Calibri and things like that are sort of a, a, a mixture, but you don't want to use Times New Roman because it's harder to read in a presentation. It's great for a paper, uh, the text, but it's not so good for presentation. Uh, generally, you're going to want to use multiple types of, of visual aids. So you're going to want some graphs, you're going to want some schematics, you want some photos, uh, and it, it varies up the, the way the data is presented. It's nice. Use consistent graphics. So if you if if uh, these colors mean something and they can mean something in another uh, figure, that's really helpful. Use this is probably not quite enough white space here. Uh, I'll criticize myself here or my students, um, but do do use consistent and enough white space to allow the a pleasing uh, for the viewer. And then make sure you acknowledge uh, who has helped you, uh, funding agencies there, and cite. Um, data that isn't, isn't your own. Okay, uh, last poll here. How long should your presentation be? Again, I said I wasn't gonna get into the presentation part enough because I didn't have time, um, but you can think of that. One of the problems, these polling softwares, they, you know, five to seven minutes is different than five to seven min, but that's okay. Uh, 
All right, there's there's some excellent answers coming in here. And uh, as you can probably guess, uh, there is no right answer. Um, but one of you said, you know, one, three or 10 minutes depend on the audience interest. And it, and it does depend on the audience interest. It depends on uh, a lot of things. So if you're, depending on what you're doing, if, if it's a competition, they'll tell you, do a five minute presentation and then there's five minutes of questions. Practice, 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 and make sure you're within that five minutes. Do not go over because that's just gonna bother the judge, right? But if there is no judge, it's you're just at a, uh, a presentation, uh, you just have posters in a normal session and people are just walking by, it's really good to have a short one minute version. If someone just kind of stalls in front of you and says, oh, that's interesting. Hey, can I show you, Just can I just talk about one minute and show you part of my presentation? Um, but then you have a longer one um, ready in case they show a lot of interest. Uh, you could ask them what their interest is. So they could, you could say, um, do you know about this topic? Would you like me to talk about significance or jump right to the results? And again, if you're asking them those kind of questions, then you can tailor it for them. And yeah, you have to be a little nimble on your feet there, but um, that's what's important because you don't want to stick someone with a 10 minute explanation of something and they're just being nice to stand there for a second. Uh, it's okay that they just saw your name, they, they, see, they see the topic and they get a one minute overview of uh, the main reason and the, and the conclusion, and then they walk on, that's fine. Um, so definitely try to have multiple uh, versions of a, of a talk ready for them. Okay, I wanna, I wanna acknowledge people. So I've given this talk uh, multiple times. The first time actually was with Craig Gorgon uh, from Purdue at, for BMES webinar. And this is being recorded, but you could go watch that one. And uh, what we did was I talked about the anatomy of the poster like this, uh, a little bit different slides, a little less uh, interactive with the poll everywhere. And Craig talked about the uh, how to give a presentation and, and uh, how to network afterwards and things like that. So you can go back in the, I believe in the BMES uh, web uh, archives, uh, when you have to log in as a, as a um, BMES member and you can go watch that, that's an hour webinar, but it's, it's essentially this plus that. Um, Zoe Ryder, a faculty member here at, at WPI, she's worked with me to, doing the data presentation for a few classes. So I added a couple slides that she put in there and uh, someone from our academic technology center uh, also helped with a couple of those figures. Uh, Michelle uh, Chapa, who, um, is, uh, I don't know, she's a multiple, she's a different director now, and she's still at BMES. Thanks to Ryan for uh, helping set this up. Thanks to you for inviting me. And then I did get some um, images and content from different websites here. And so you can go and look at these. Um, I sent the slides, so those links might be active. I haven't looked at these in a few years here, but it can give you do's and don'ts, uh, a little deeper dive into that. Okay. Um, Again, I didn't quite know this uh, format. Maybe there's uh, any questions in the chat. Uh, I, I can't see anyone's faces, so that's a little disturbing. <laughs> uh, we do actually have a couple of questions. Um, one from Julie in the chat. So um, I do have a take, chat here. So I can take a couple uh, minutes to answer those questions and then we can wrap things up. Thanks, Chris. All right. So what I see here in my chat is, I see one from Julie, um, main errors to see posters Students make with the posters. Uh, it's a good question. Um, you know, I kind of, that's kind of what this presentation is about. Uh, I, I kind of see, even if you say all these things, I still see a lot of these errors. So what I see a, a lot of is lack of a conclusion. That almost always people throw a lot of data on there and then they, they don't uh, give a conclusion. I see a lot of significant figure uh, problems. So. People will have a, a slope of a line and it'll be 1.3572. And it doesn't matter how many times I say it, I, I see it very often. Um, I see small font on figures. So again, trying to get the main point from uh, when I'm just walking by a poster, if you have to look within a few inches of the poster, uh, that's not fair to, to your viewer. Uh, I see a lot of paragraphs. I see a lot of text in a lot of them. And it's just... Simplify, 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 and use more schematics and um, and graphs and diagrams, and that's uh, what's really helpful. Oh, 
Okay, well, thank you, Chris, again, for speaking with us and for everyone who participated. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post the breakout room sessions. They'll open at 12.30. And we'll have 30 minutes to work on your posters with our breakout room moderators. We'll have an hour break after that, and then we'll reconvene. Thank you so much again, Chris. And, I gave um, you back 20 minutes of your day. <laughs> yes, take that 20 minutes as like an early break. All right, great. All right. <laughs> thank you, everyone.